Welcome back to Vibing with the Guzmans. Today we are going to put together a recipe that is a braised pork shoulder recipe. Uh, here I got the pork shoulder which I purchased in my 100 pounds of meat haul. I'm showing you here all of the ingredients. Um, I do have some substitutions here included in this recipe. I'm gonna showcase a substitution for this red wine vinegar that is called in the recipe, as well as a substitution for the tomato paste that is called in the recipe. Uh, back to my pork shoulder, I did purchase this in my 100 pounds of meat challenge and um, it's a beautiful cut here. The serving is four ounces for 200 and 20 calories. Uh, it does show you here some cooking instructions. And over here, I just want to showcase that I did purchase this um, from Fresco y Mas, uh, which is a subsidiary of Winn Dixie. I only paid $4.49 for this pork shoulder, as um, it was, I believe, 49 cents per pound. If you wish to use beef instead of pork, you can definitely go ahead and do that. I'll be linking the recipe below so that you can have the exact measurements and everything. So the first thing I want to do is get a sharp knife and a cutting board. We're going to go ahead and remove this pork shoulder from the bag. And once we get it out of the bag, we'll go ahead and cut away the meat from the bone because I want it to be boneless. And then once I get it off of the bone, then we'll go ahead and wash this meat in a solution of water as well as um, lemon juice. I'll let it sit in this mixture for about five minutes. And then after that, I'll rinse it again with water so that it's nice and clean. So now I'm gonna go ahead and feel for the bone in the meat because I don't want to cut into the bone, of course. And I just wanna get this little edge over here. So we're gonna cut in and get a nice big hunk of meat off of there. I'm trying to get about two and a half to three pounds for this recipe. Look at this piece. That's a great piece of meat. The color of it looks good. Um, it's a nice weight. And I think we are halfway to our two and a half to three pounds mark. I'm just looking here and I'm gonna cut a little bit more. Um, I'm not really sure the technical terms of the meat uh, sections that I'm evaluating here. I just know that I don't want to cut into the bone and um, I just wanna get right underneath the skin the skin, once you put it into the oven, it's gonna crisp up really nicely. So I'm um, just going to go ahead and continue cutting away. And once I have my pieces taken off, at that point is when I'll go ahead and wash up the meat, as I was telling you earlier. All right, so here we go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put this in this container and we'll go ahead and get it cleaned up. I'm going to put the rest of this back in the fridge as I'm going to save it for pulled pork uh, for tomorrow's dinner. So um, I'll put this away for now. All right, so here's the meat. We're gonna go ahead and get it all washed up with lemon and water. It's totally up to you, but that's just what I do. While our meat is soaking, I'm gonna go ahead and just clean up my work area, um, clean down the surfaces already washed my hands and everything so we'll just place some clorox bleach here and uh, just wipe down our surface areas uh, you know cleanliness is very important in the kitchen i'm also going to take this here the cutting board and get that cleaned up as well okay so we have a clean cutting board and i'm going to go ahead and prep my vegetables I'm going to utilize half a bag of my baby carrots. I could leave it whole, but I'm in the mood to get that chopped up. And I'm going to be using the celery sticks here. The recipe does call for two celery sticks. So we're just going to go ahead and chop everything up so it's ready to go uh, when we're ready to use it. The recipe doesn't call for seasoning the meat, but I like to season my meat. So I'm gonna use this Maggie Sasson seasoning and black pepper. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up my onion. 
So I'm just going to cut off the ends there and get the outer layers peeled off. And then I'm going to chop up my onion using my Vidalia onion chopper. Now, before I start using my Vidalia onion chopper, I'm going to cut it up into quarters just so that it's a little bit easier. So that's my Vidalia onion chopper and there will be a link in the description box below in case you're interested in it. I truly enjoy using this Vidalia onion chopper and so you'll be able to see that all you have to do is take your chopped up pieces of onion and put them right there on like the little metal thing and it is so easy to chop and one of the best parts is there's no tears. And I also find that if you chop it, like not on the outer layer part, but flip it to the inside layer, I hope that makes sense. It makes it a bit more easy to chop as you'll be able to see right here. Look at that. Now, finally, we got our meat out from the uh, sink there. I did rinse it off and we're gonna go ahead and put it on this cutting board and cut it up into pieces. The recipe calls for six pieces and when i saw the recipe the way that they had it pictured they were pretty thick so i'm going to cut them up into about six thick pieces all right so now that we got it all cut up we're going to season it with the maggie sasson this black pepper and I think that's all we'll pretty much need because, of course, the recipe has its own flavorings that it's going to introduce. But I just didn't want to leave my meat out there naked. So just measure it out to your liking. And, um, you know, we'll just move on from there. So I measured out a tablespoon of the black pepper. And I also measured out a tablespoon of that Maggi Sasson. We're gonna mix it all up and then liberally coat all of our meat. Next, I'm gonna show you the substitute I found online for a red wine vinegar substitute. You just need a cup of water, two black tea bags. You put them inside the microwave and let it boil up. Then after that, we're gonna pour it into this teacup and let it steep for a few minutes, um, probably about three to five minutes. And then after that is when the magic happens. This here is my Dutch pot. That's what we call it in Jamaica. Um, and in Spanish countries, they call it an Amusa pot, but it's not a Amusa brand. Um, so this is my Dutch pot, and that's what I'm going to use to sear my meat. I'm just going to put it on to about a number four on my stove. And then I'm going to grab my uh, tea. There it is. Just, oops, oh, spilling some tea. But anyway, um, we're just going to take the tea out and just set it to the side. Here's that beautifully seasoned meat ready to go. So we're going to take our misto oil sprayer here. I talked about that in a previous video. Um, you just pump it up and you spray out your oil. This is avocado oil going into the pot. If you're interested in the misto, I will have a link for it in the description box below. I love it because you don't end up using any kind of um, propellants that are in regular oil sprayers, uh, which have added chemicals into your uh, food. The oil is hot and ready to go now, so we're going to take our meat and get it into the pan. Oh my goodness, it's smelling so good already. I can't wait. Oh, shout out to my sister-in-law for getting me this cup for my birthday. Hey. All right, let's go ahead and get these trusty tongs and flip this meat over so we can sear both sides, or all sides rather. Uh, look at that. It's coming along beautifully in this pot. I love these pots because I do believe that they distribute the heat evenly so you won't have like scorch marks or anything. Or is that just my situation? While that's coming along, we're going to take this garlic. The recipe calls for six cloves of garlic and i'm going to go ahead and chop up the garlic into like a rough chop 
garlic not really minced so all we have to do is just get each clove out and i'll show you how i get it out of the uh, peel we'll put the skin and stuff like in that little container there Now we got the gloves out of the garlic. I just wanna show you all the different pieces. I'm gonna use seven of them because the recipe says for six, but some of them are kinda of tiny. Now, Rachel Ray taught me, yes, she taught me personally, I'm just kidding, but she taught me a little trick to get them out. So we're gonna take this knife and then you're going to smash the garlic on the cutting board and that will allow the skin to separate from, I guess, the garlic clove itself. See? Easy peasy. All right, so now I'm just going to take out the pork from the pot because they're all seared on the sides. We don't want it to cook all the way because of course it's going to go into the oven and cook for a couple more hours. Now here we have that red wine substitute. It was again, just a cup of water, two tea bags. Now we're gonna put in two tablespoons of distilled vinegar. That will act as our red wine substitute. I'm going to go ahead and now saute up my veggies. So we have our chopped up carrots, we have chopped up celery, and we're going to saute them. I have the oven, or I'm sorry, I have the stove at about a three. Just spraying it with my Misto spray that has the um, avocado oil, and we're just going to get it nice and tender. Just want to show you really quickly look at these vegetables they look so delicious and i'm scraping the bottom of this pot to get all the drippings from the meat incorporated into those veggies mm -mm, good all right in goes these onions this is going to be amazing uh at this point i'm not really following the recipe 100 percent um they had some kind of fancy turn i think it was called a mirepoix I could be wrong, but this is what I'm doing, and it looks pretty darn good. In goes our six cloves of minced garlic. Swish, swish, swish. Here we have the substitute for the tomato paste. Just some good old ketchup. I looked it up. You can substitute ketchup for tomato paste with a one to one ratio. So the recipe called for three tablespoons. So I put in about three tablespoons of ketchup. Oh, a little bit more won't hurt. Next, we're going to put in some flour. This is all-purpose flour. This is my mason jar storage container. I absolutely love it. I got both of these from Home Goods. If you're interested in a mason jar like this for your flour, rice, things like that, I'll look on Amazon and see if I can find an item and link it below in the description box. The recipe calls for cooking the flowers so you can get that raw taste out. So we're cooking on a level three on the stove and just mixing it in. And now we're going to use two cups of beef broth. Then we're going to pour it into the pot and reduce the liquid. Now we're going to take our tea mixture with the vinegar and pour it into the pot. This is to substitute the red wine vinegar. Here I'd like to show you how it's thickened up a bit and look at that, it looks beautiful. Okay, so we got our pork cuts here ready to go 
and I'm going to just get my sauce and pour it all over. So now we're going to go ahead and pour our beef broth. I'm pouring it on the side so it doesn't knock the vegetables off of the meat or anything like that. And in goes our bay leaf. I got three bay leaves in there. I didn't have any fresh parsley, so I'm using dried parsley and just sprinkling it all over. You can be as liberal with that as you want. Then I'm going to tightly seal some foil on top. I did use two layers of foil and in the oven it goes. So the recipe did call for it to cook for three hours, but I'm taking it out a little bit early because husband was hungry. So along with our meat, we do have some roasted asparagus that I did in the oven and some white rice. So we're going to go ahead and admire this beauty right now and then get it plated up. So this is my plate here and this thing is fork tender. Look how it just easily comes apart like that and it was uh, very moist as you can see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give it a quick taste test for you guys. And it is delicious. So I highly recommend this recipe which I will have linked below. If you enjoyed this type of content which I do try to focus around anything budget minded please be sure to hit that like button comment below and of course like this video